You're listening to the Seeing Jesus Together podcast from Oak Mountain Presbyterian Church, a companion podcast to our journey through the New Testament as we long to see Jesus in fresh ways through Scripture. Hello, my name is Sue Harris. Uh, This week we're looking at 1 Corinthians 3. Uh, And the aspect of the journal we're going to spend a little time in discussing is uh, meditating, is is the portion where we are beckoned to meditate. Remember, in the journal, we have already spent time um, doing some assessment, some self-awareness, how we're coming into the moment, um, offering those prayer requests to the Lord. Then we listen to the scripture, and then we meditate. And meditation is challenging because it takes time and quiet and space. And that, well, a lot of us don't have that. And for me, that's the first thing that gets knocked out. I want to knock it out. I want to come up with a takeaway, my fortune cookie for the day, my my factoid that's going to carry me through the day. And the Lord... Um, more so it is more like a rotisserie where it's a slow cooked, slowly baked in principle that impacts our hearts. And so when we meditate, work at separating yourself, spending time in the quiet after you've listened to the scripture, slow down and spend time with the Lord meditating on his truths. And so as we look at 1 Corinthians 3, uh, we're not going to do the whole chapter. I've grabbed about 11 verses, and I'm going to read those verses, and we're going to talk about what I sensed as I was meditating, uh, what leaped out to me during that, uh, I was going to say conversation with the Lord, not really a conversation, but as I sat and listened and meditated upon this scripture. So here we go, 1 Corinthians 3, 5 through 16. I'm going to read it. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he, who knew, he, neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid the foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy and you are that temple. I got to tell you, when I was reading this, I I started to hear about, uh, you know, in verse nine, where God's fellow workers, God's fields, God's building. Um, Paul calls himself a skilled master, uh, laying a foundation um, that that the Lord will test our work in verse 13. Um, talks about rewards. And so uh, for someone who is uh, sort of uh, someone who struggles with, am I saved by faith or by works, that this feels a little, it's rubbing me the wrong way. But as I looked further and a little bit more closely, um, there's some assurance here. Because we know in Romans, it says that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so we know that we don't earn our salvation. So what is this work? We see that this work is is not for salvation. At the end, verse 15, if anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. So it's not for salvation, not for our adoption, not for our justification, not for our acceptance by the Lord. So what is it? What is the work that is being talked about here? 
If anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become manifest. If we jump back up to verse 10, it talks about, Paul says, according to the grace of God given to me. So even when he says, like a skilled master, skilled master builder, it's not like Paul saying, look how awesome I am. He says, according to the grace God has given me. Therefore, because of this grace, I somehow, some way have become a skilled master, laid a foundation, someone else is building upon it. And so this work is, is the effort that we put forth by God's grace. It's, it's the way in which we live. We are his temple. We are indwelled by the Holy Spirit of the living God, and he works in and through us. Why? Because that's what Christians do. That's how we work. That's, that's, that's part of the, the plan of the garden so long ago is still going on now. The Lord is redeeming restoring this earth. How? In a number of ways. And one of those ways is through the body of believers who are indwelled by the spirit of the living God. I, I, I've said this quote a number of times. And as I was looking at this, it reminded me of the Dallas Willard quote that says, God is opposed, uh, God's grace is opposed to earning. It is not opposed to effort. So I receive God's grace by, by faith. It's, it's, it's mercy given to me. And so I, I'm nothing I've earned, nor is it any way that I'm, uh, I, I haven't done anything to earn it. But what do I do? I put forth effort. Why? The spirit inside of me, he moves me according to the grace of God given to me. And we do work. We build upon the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, stones wood, hay, or straw, this is what the Lord does, and it becomes manifest, but it is according to his grace. So we are, as believers, we are secure in Christ. There is nothing we can do to lose the salvation that we were granted as a free gift. But we also are kingdom builders, and we build the kingdom by his grace. Thanks for listening. The Seeing Jesus Together podcast is a ministry of Oak Mountain Presbyterian Church in Birmingham, Alabama, in partnership with Iconicity and the Seeing Jesus Together Journal. For more information about OMPC, stay up to date on our reading plan and purchase an OMPC journal, visit our website at ompc.org. To discover more about the Seeing Jesus Together journal, visit seeingjesustogether.com.